In this video, I will be discussing about combinations. Another type of combinatorial problem is looking into the composition of a group and not the order that matters. We are often interested in determining the number of different groups of R objects that could be formed from a total of N objects. So by definition, combination is a group of objects where the composition of the group and not the order is important. Now, let's proceed to our first theorem here. The number of combinations of N distinct objects taken R at a time is this notation here. N taken R at a time is equal to N factorial all over N minus R factorial times R factorial. And the second theorem is the number of ways of partitioning a set of N objects into R cells with N sub 1 elements in the first cell, N sub 2 elements in the second, and so on and so forth is given by the combination of N taken N sub 1 here times the combination of N minus N sub 1 taken N sub 2 at a time times N minus N sub 1 minus N sub 2 taken N sub 3 at a time and so on and so forth until this combination here which is N minus N sub 1 minus N sub 2 minus and so on and so forth of N sub R minus 1 taken N sub R at a time. Or equivalently, we can use this formula N factorial divided by N sub 1 factorial times N sub 2 factorial times and so on and so forth until the last cell which is given by N sub R factorial. Now let's proceed to our illustrative examples here. How many different committees of 4 men can be formed from a group of 9 men? Now, take note that we will be forming a group of four men from this group of nine men. So, applying the theorem of combination, this is the combination of nine men taken four at a time. So, this is equal to nine factorial divided by nine minus four quantity factorial times four factorial. And we know that 9 minus 4 is 5. So 9 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 4 factorial. But 9 factorial can be expressed as 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times the product of 5 to 1. But the product of 5 to 1 is the same as 5 factorial. And why is it that I am writing this product as 5 factorial? So that I can cancel this 5 factorial with the denominator of 5 factorial. And the numerator of 8 can be cancelled by the product of 4 and 2 in the denominator. And therefore, we are left by this quotient here, which is 378 divided by 3 and the result is 126 different committees of four men can be formed from this group of nine men. Or you may use our fundamental principle of counting by creating four boxes here because we are forming a committee of four men from this group of nine men. And in the first box, you can choose any of the nine men to be included in your committee of four and the second one can be chosen from the remaining of eight men because one of them has been chosen already so the third box can have seven choices and the fourth box is left with six choices but remember this is a group of four men from nine men but the order is taken into consideration however in this problem arrangement or order does not matter as long as the four men is already in your committee of four men so we need to remove the arrangement of four men within a committee 
and the arrangement of four men in the committee can be represented by this one here, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And multiplying the numerator, we get 3024. And the denominator, the product is 24. So dividing the two numbers, we have 126. Therefore, we say that there are 126 ways you can create committees of four men from the group of nine men. Now, let's proceed to our next example here. From six boys and four girls, a committee of five is to be chosen such that there must be three boys and two girls in that committee of five. In how many ways can this be done? So, remember that you will be forming committees of five wherein in this committee of five, there will be three boys and two girls here. But take note that your three boys must be taken from the group of six boys. And your two girls must be taken from the group of four girls. And applying the formula for combination, the combination of 6 taken 3 at a time is equal to 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 3 quantity factorial times 3 factorial. And this will be multiplied by the combination of 4 taken 2 at a time. And the combination of 4 taken 2 at a time is equal to 4 factorial divided by 4 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Now, simplifying the denominators, we have 6 minus 3, which is equal to 3. And also, 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. Therefore, our numerator, which is 6 factorial, can be written as 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. So that we can cancel this 3 factorial in the numerator with the 3 factorial in the denominator. And also the 4 factorial in the second factor can be expressed as 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. So that we can also cancel this 2 factorial with the 2 factorial in the denominator. And also we can cancel the 6 in the numerator with the 6 factor in the denominator. So therefore, we are left by this quotient here, which is 240 divided by 2. And dividing these two numbers, we have 120. Hence, we can say that there are 120 ways we can form a committee of five, wherein that committee must consist of three boys and two girls there. Now let's proceed to the next problem. How many ways can seven people be assigned to one triple room and two double rooms? Now this problem is applying the second theorem of combination that we have presented in the previous slide that we are partitioning the seven people into three cells wherein the first cell is composed of three people and the next cell is composed of two and so with the third cell which is also composed of two people. So solving this problem is to apply the combinations that we have previously defined that out of the seven people, we can take the combination of seven taken three at a time. Because the seven people, you choose three to be assigned in one triple room. And after you have chosen your three people, the remaining is four. And out of these four remaining people, you can choose your two people to be assigned to the first double room. So, after choosing your next two people, the remaining is only two. And you don't have the choice, but these two people will be assigned to the last double room. So, applying the formula for combinations, we have 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 3 factorial, which is multiplied by 3 factorial here. 
and this second fraction is 4 factorial divided by 4 minus 2 quantity factorial times 2 factorial and this represents this combination here and also this one is the representation of this third combination here so simplifying our fraction we have 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 3 factorial times the fraction of 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial and then lastly multiplied by 2 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 2 factorial and we can express the 7 factorial as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial and this 4 factorial can be cancelled by the 4 factorial in the denominator and also the 3 factorial in the second fraction which can be cancelled with the denominator of the first fraction and also the 2 factorial in the third fraction can be cancelled with the denominator of the second fraction and also you can cancel the 4 in the numerator with the two twos in the denominator so therefore we are left with this quotient here and hence there are 210 ways we can assign the seven people to one triple room and two double rooms or you may use the equivalent formula for this problem that the seven people can be partitioned into three cells wherein the people in its cell will not be arranged so 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial where the 3 factorial is the arrangement of the 3 people in the triple room and also this 2 factorial for the arrangement of the 2 people in one of the double rooms and so with this 2 factorial which is the arrangement of the two people in the last double room so expressing 7 factorial as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial we can cancel this 3 factorial with the 3 factorial in the denominator and also the 4 here can be cancelled by the product of two twos in the denominator so therefore we are left with these factors of 7, 6, and 5 and the product is equal to 210. Therefore we say that there are 210 ways we can assign the 7 people to one triple room and the two double rooms. Now let's proceed to the next problem here. In how many ways can 9 toys be divided between four children if the youngest child is to receive three toys and each of the other children two toys so solving this problem is to give first to the youngest so the nine toys you choose three of them that will be given to the youngest one and after giving the three toys to the youngest one the remaining toys is only six and out of the six toys you can choose two toys to be given to the next child here and after giving the two toys there will be four remaining toys so choosing two out of the four toys is given by this combination here and lastly you have a remaining of two toys that will be given to the last child and applying the formula of combination we have 9 factorial divided by 9 minus 3 quantity factorial times 3 factorial as the formula for the combination of 9 taken 3 there and for the combination of 6 taken 2 at a time we have 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial and for this combination here we have 4 factorial divided by 4 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial and lastly this combination of 2 taken 2 at a time is given by this formula here and simplifying this 
numbers, we have 9 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 3 factorial. And canceling the 6 factorial in the numerator with the 6 factorial in the denominator, we can also cancel the 4 factorial with the 4 factorial in the denominator. And so with the 2 factorial, with the 2 factorial in the denominator. So therefore, we are left by this 9 factorial in the numerator, which can be written as 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial which is 2 times 1 times another 2 factorial which is 2 times 1 times another 2 factorial which is 2 times 1. And canceling the 3 factorial in the numerator with the 3 factorial in the denominator, we can cancel also this product of 8 in the denominator with the factor of 8 in the numerator. Therefore, multiplying those numbers, we have a product of 7,560. Hence, we can say that there are 7,560 ways we can divide the nine toys to four children if the youngest child is to receive three toys and each of the other children two toys only. Now, we can use our second formula for this problem that giving nine toys to the four children wherein the youngest child will receive three toys and the other three will receive only two toys each. So, simplifying these numbers, we have to cancel the 3 factorial in the numerator with the 3 factorial in the denominator. And so, with the product of 8 in the denominator with the factor of 8 in the numerator. So, therefore, we are left by this product. Hence, there are 7,560 ways we can divide the 9 toys to the 4 children if the youngest child is to receive the 3 toys and each of the other children will receive 2 toys here. Now, I will give you more problems on counting techniques. So here, we will be considering a little more challenging problem here that could be useful in the discussion of probability and that these are also meant to sharpen your counting skills. Take note that in the second lecture, I said we are counting without really counting. So oh, what is the meaning of that? We are saying that we know that that's the number of possible outcomes without even listing all of the possible outcomes by just using counting techniques. So, suppose an experiment consists of tossing a fair coin eight times. How many different outcomes are possible? Letter B. How many different outcomes have exactly three tails? Letter C. How many outcomes have at most two tails? Letter D. How many outcomes have at least three tails? Now, solving for the first question, we can create 8 boxes here because we will be tossing a fair coin 8 times. And we know that the first toss could result in two ways because the coin could land maybe a head or a tail. And tossing again the second coin could result into head or tail. And so with the third toss, we can have two possible outcomes, head or tail. And so with the fourth toss, the fifth toss, the sixth toss, the seventh toss, and the last tossing of the coin. And multiplying all these numbers is using the fundamental principle of counting. And the result is 256 ways. Therefore, we can say that there are 256 different possible outcomes when you toss a fair coin 8 times. Or you can use the ordered sample with repetition formula. And this is 2 raised to the power of 8.
So, 2 to the power 8 is 256. Hence, there are 256 different outcomes possible. So, proceeding to the next question, how many different outcomes have exactly three tails? Now, using our fundamental principle of counting, the three boxes to receive the T's, or in other words, the tails, can be selected from the eight boxes. And you can do that by selecting the three positions out of the eight positions. But here, order is not important. So we are choosing the three places out of the eight places there. So therefore, we can take the combination of eight taken three at a time. And we know that this is equal to eight factorial divided by eight minus three factorial times three factorial. And subtracting 3 from 8, the difference is 5. So 8 factorial can be expressed as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. So that we can cancel this 5 factorial with the 5 factorial in the denominator. So we are left with 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 3 factorial. But 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So, canceling 6 in the numerator with the product of 6 in the denominator, then we are left by this product of 8 and 7. And the product is 56. Therefore, we say that there are 56 outcomes. If you want to have exactly 3 tails when you toss a fair coin 8 times. Now, let's proceed to our third question here. How many outcomes have at most two tails? Now, in this question, we are after with the result of the eight tossing of a fair coin when you have exactly two tails or having exactly one tail or no tail at all because the clue words there is at most two tails. So you can have exactly two tails or exactly one tail, or no tail at all as a result of tossing a fair coin eight times. So solving this problem, we can consider the first case wherein there is no tail at all. So the result is having all heads when you toss the fair coin eight times, or in other words, exactly no tail at all. And the second case is having exactly one tail. And the tail could be in the first toss or the second toss or the third toss there. As long as you will have exactly one tail. But the third case is having exactly two tails. So it could happen at the first and the second or maybe first and the third tossing of a coin or first and the fourth, and so on and so forth. In other words, we are after with the outcomes of having exactly two tails there. So remember that order here does not matter. So when you have no tail at all, it's like solving for the combination of A taken zero at a time because you are after with the no tail at all plus the combination of 8 taken 1 at a time because you want exactly one tail. And the third case is having exactly two tails. So solving the combination formulas for these three combinations, we have 1 plus 8 plus 28 and the sum is 37, which means that there are 37 possible outcomes when you expect at most two tails as a result of tossing a coin eight times. Now, let's proceed to our fourth question there. When you pay attention with at least three tails as an outcome of tossing a coin eight times. And take note that the clue words here are at least three tails. So when you say at least three tails, you consider an outcome with exactly three tails. 
and also another case having exactly four tails and also having exactly five tails or six tails or seven tails or exactly all of them are tails so solving for their combination representation the first case is the combination of a taken three if you want to have exactly three tails in the outcomes when you toss a fair coin eight times and this is added to the outcomes when you want to have exactly four tails in the outcomes of tossing eight times and so with the combination of eight taken five at a time because you want to have exactly five tails in the outcomes and also eight taken six plus eight taken seven plus eight taken eight because you want all of the result are all tails so solving their values the combination of eight taken three at a time is 56 and the combination of eight taken four at a time is 70 the combination of of eight taken five at a time is 56 and the combination of eight taken six at a time is 28 and so with a combination of 8 taken 7 at a time is 8 and 8 taken 8 is 1 so adding these numbers we have 219 ways which means that there are 219 possible outcomes when you expect at least three tails in the outcomes when you toss a fair coin eight times but I can solve this question using the backdoor approach because this backdoor approach is a simpler one. Now to solve is to find first the total number of possible outcomes and this will be subtracted by the number of outcomes with at most two tails because at most two tails and at least three tails are complementary in the tossing of coin eight times because if you will make a diagram here say zero one two three four five six seven and eight the number of outcomes with at most two tails are this one here so an outcome without any tail an outcome having exactly one tail and an outcome of having exactly two tails so these are the possibilities when you expect at most two tails in the outcomes of two sing a coin eight times but when you say at least three tails you will have these possibilities here expecting exactly three tails or exactly four tails or exactly having five tails or expecting exactly six tails in the outcomes exactly seven tails or exactly eight tails so they are complementary so subtracting the number of outcomes with at most two tails from the total number of outcomes the result is the number of outcomes with at least three tails but we know that the total number of outcomes is 256 because we have solved this one in our first question and the number of outcomes with at most two tails is being answered in the third question which has an answer of 37 and subtracting 37 from 256 we have 219 ways so therefore there are 219 possible outcomes when you expect to have at least three tails in the outcomes and you can see that we have the same answer with our previous solution there but this one is a simpler one because this is the backdoor approach that can be easier sometimes than the direct approach which are a little bit tedious because you are listing all the cases there now let's proceed to the next example 
find the number of seven digit telephone numbers that have at least one repeated digit. Now take note that it's given that lead zeros are allowed, which means that zero as a first digit in the telephone number is allowed here. So listing all possible cases could be a very cumbersome process because it is possible to have a telephone number with one repeated digit or having a telephone number with exactly two digits that are repeated or three digits that are being repeated. So listing all possible seven digit telephone numbers is a very tedious process. So here we can apply our backdoor approach because we see the clue words here of at least one repeated digit since common sense would tell you that having at least one repeated digit is the complement of no repeated digit at all so determining the total number of seven digit telephone numbers that have at least one repeated digit this can be obtained when you subtract the total number of seven digit telephone numbers that have no repeated digits from the total possible seven digit numbers without any restriction so counting how many seven digit telephone numbers without restrictions can be obtained by 10 to the power 7 because these are the total possible seven digit telephone numbers that can be formed here and subtracting this one by the seven digit telephone numbers that have no repeated digit this can be represented by the permutation of 10 taken seven at a time because there are 10 digits from 0 to 9 and you will take only 7 because we are forming 7 digit telephone numbers and we know that 10 to the power 7 is 10 million here and the permutation of 10 taken 7 is 604,800 there so obtaining the difference we have 9,395,207 digit telephone numbers that can be formed when you expect at least one repeated digit. So let's proceed to our example 19. An urn contains eight white balls and four red balls. Four balls are selected. In how many ways? Can four balls be drawn from a total of 12 balls because we have eight whites and four reds here if the color is not considered. So if the color is not considered, we will be solving for the combination of 12 taken four at a time because you are selecting four balls from a group of 12 balls without paying attention to its color. So solving this one using the formula for combination, we have 12 factorial divided by 12 minus 4 quantity factorial. And this is multiplied by 4 factorial. So 12 minus 4 is 8 factorial. So 12 factorial can be expressed as 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. And this 8 factorial in the numerator can be cancelled with the 8 factorial in the denominator. And also 12 in this numerator can be cancelled with the product of 12 in the denominator. So we are left with 11 times 10 times 9 which is 990 divided by the number 2 in the denominator there. So we have 495 ways. Therefore, we can say that there are 495 ways that you can choose 4 balls from these 12 balls regardless of its color. Now, let's proceed to the next question. If 3 of the 4 balls are white and the other 1 ball is red. So, mathematically, counting without really counting, we know that the combination of 8 taken 3 at a time represents the choosing of the 3 white balls from the 8 white balls and this will be multiplied 
with the choosing of one red ball from the four red balls there. So solving its combination formula, we have this fraction as the combination of 8 taken 3 at a time. And this will be multiplied by this formula for the combination of 4 red balls taken 1 at a time. So simplifying these numbers, we can cancel the 5 factorial in the numerator with the 5 factorial in the denominator. And so with the 3 factorial there and also the number 6 in the numerator can be cancelled by the product of 6 in the denominator. So therefore, we are left with the product of 8, 7, and 4 there, which is equal to 224. So therefore, we say that there are 224 ways we can choose our 4 balls such that out of these 4 balls, you are assured to have 3 white balls and 1 red ball. So, proceeding to the next question, how many ways can 4 balls be drawn from a total of 12 balls if all of the 4 balls are white? So, common sense will tell you that these 4 balls must be taken from the 8 white balls, of course, and Solving is combination formula, we have this 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. And canceling this 4 factorial with the 4 factorial in the denominator, we can also cancel 6 with the product of 6 in the denominator. So therefore, we are left with this quotient of 280 divided by 4. So dividing these two numbers, we have 70 ways. Therefore, we say that there are 70 ways we can choose the 4 white balls from these 12 balls. And lastly, how can you choose the 4 balls if 4 balls are red? Then, of course, the 4 red balls must be chosen from the group of 4 red balls. And common sense would tell you that this could happen only in one way. So we say that there is only one way we can choose the four red balls from the group of four red balls there. Now, let's proceed to third to the last example here. From a group of three men and two women, how many committees of three can be formed that contain at least one woman in this committee? And we notice that we must have to pay attention to this word of at least one woman in the committee of three here. So considering this first case of having exactly one woman in this committee of three, we can also consider the second case of having exactly two women in this committee of three. But we cannot have a third case of having exactly three women because we are given only two women here. So solving for the committee of having exactly one woman is to choose this one woman from the group of two women. And of course, in the committee of three, the two were men. So common sense would tell you that these two men must be taken from the given three men. Plus, the possible ways you can choose this committee of three having exactly two women. And these two women must be chosen from the two women available. And this will be multiplied by the remaining men that will be chosen from a group of three men. So solving their combination formulas, we can simplify as 2 times 3 in the case number 1. And this will be added to the case number 2, which is 1 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 times 3 is 3. We have the sum of 9 ways. So therefore, we say that there are 9 ways you can choose your committee of 3 that must contain at least one woman. But we can have an alternate solution here by using our backdoor approach. So first, consider the number of committees of three without restriction. 
In other words, you are choosing your committees of three from this group of five people regardless of their gender. And this will be subtracted by the number of committees of three without women in it because having at least one woman is the complement of without women at all. But we can solve the committees of three without restriction by solving for the combination of five taken three at a time because you will be choosing three out of five people because there is no restriction here. And this will be subtracted by three taken three because when you want to count how many committees of three without women in it is to choose your committee of three from the group of three men so as to have a committee of three without woman in it so five taken three the answer is ten and three taken three the answer is one so subtracting these two numbers we have nine ways and you can see that we have the same answer when using the direct method of solving this problem but take note that this alternate solution is a little bit easier than the direct approach presented here. Now let's proceed to the second to the last problem for this combination topic here. From a group of five men and seven women, how many different committees consisting of two men and three women can be formed? So forming these committees of five, we choose the two men from the given five men. And this will be multiplied by choosing these three women from the given seven women there. So solving their combination formulas, we have the product of 10 and 35. So multiplying these two numbers, we have a product of 350. So we say that there are 350 ways we can choose a committee of five wherein the committee must contain two men and three women here now let's proceed to the second question how many different committees can be formed consisting of two men and three women if two of the seven women are feuding and refuse to serve on the committee together so we can create two cases here and the first case is forming a committee not containing any of the two feuding women and also case number two wherein the committee is only containing exactly one of the feuding women so as to remove the possibility of including the two feuding women in the committee so solving for the first case wherein you are forming these committees excluding the two feuding women we can choose our two men from the group of five men and this will be multiplied by choosing your three women out from the five women there because the two women out of the seven women here will not be included in this committee. So this is two taken zero, which means that you will not be choosing any of the feuding women. Then the three women will be chosen from the five non-feuding women. But this will be added to the second case that, of course, the two men will be chosen from the group of five men. But this will be multiplied by taking only one woman from the two feuding women but the other two will be taken from the five non-feuding women because we are only including exactly one woman from the two feuding women there so five taken two at a time is ten and two taken zero is one and we know also that five taken three is ten plus 5 taken 2 which is 10 multiplied by 2 taken 1 which is 2 and multiplied by 5 taken 2 which is 10. So 10 times 10 is 100 and 10 times the product of 2 times 10 the result is 200. Therefore there are 300 ways you can form the committee of 5 such that this committee must contain the 2 men and 3 women. If two of the seven women are feuding and refuse to serve in the committee together. 
So, let's proceed to the last example here. In how many ways can eight people be seated at a round table if two particular people refuse to sit together? Now, remember that we are forming here a circular permutation. So, this problem is a very tricky one because there will be two particular people who refuse to sit together so there must be at least one sandwich person between them so this problem can be solved easily using the backdoor approach that first we need to determine the total number of ways they can sit in a round table minus the number of ways if the two people must sit together side by side because this is the complement of not sitting together. So, sitting in a round table without restriction is 8 minus 1 factorial minus 7 minus 1 factorial which represents the number of ways if the two particular people are sitting together. So, if they are sitting together, you consider them as one. So, instead of having 8 people, you will only consider 7 because 2 of them is considered as 1. But maybe you will ask me why I multiply 2 here. Because when you are sitting together all the time, there are two ways that you will be sitting together. One, the first person might be at your right or that person might be on your left. So, subtracting 1 from 8, and 1 from 7, we have these factorials. So, 7 factorial, which is 5,040, will be subtracted by twice of the 6 factorial, which is 720. And subtracting 1,440 from 5,040, we get the answer of 3,600 ways. So, therefore, we say, that there are 3,600 ways we can arrange the eight people in a round table when two particular people refuse to sit together. And this method is using the backdoor approach because listing all possible cases could be a tedious way. And that's it. If you learned something today, please Check out my channel for more videos like this and click subscribe. Click the notification bell below so you'll get notified whenever I'll be posting a new video. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. And always remember to math your way up. Thank you.